I heard this song and I was thinking, yes, I need to memorize this. So this is partly for me to sing this every day this week to help me memorize it. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with Him within the narrow road? Would you have Him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let Him have His way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you have him make you free and follow at his call? Would you know the peace that comes by giving all? Would you have him save you so that you need never fall? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true in providential test? Would you in his service labor always at your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. This song encourages me so much. His power, the power of Jesus, Yeshua, can make me what I ought to be. His blood can cleanse my heart and make me free. This song encourages me so much. And by his strength and grace, I'll have it memorized. <laughs> and then I won't need this anymore. Uh, we have a memory verse, and Aaron, would you like to open to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1? And uh, you can read our memory verse to us, and then we're going to sing our memory verse. Are you going to help us sing our memory verse, Jeremiah? Hmm? It's Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Yep. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right. Now we're going to sing our memory verse. <laughs> In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. Okay, without looking at the Bible... Uh, who would like to try to say this memory verse from memory? You want to try it, Brother Aaron? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> All right. Woo! <laughs> so we give Aaron an A+. All right. <laughs> you want to try it, Brother Gene? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the reference? Genesis 1-1. All right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's key. I didn't do that. <laughs> yes. The reference is important. Rachel, you want to try it? What's the reference? Genesis 1-1. One, one. All right. Very good. Yes, so Aaron gets A+. Plus, Rachel gets an A+. Plus. Repetition deepens impression. I want to do one more. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1-1. One, one. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, we're having, you know, there's nothing better than to study God's Word. <laughs> when we know who created us, we know who we are. We have an identity. We didn't evolve from a monkey. It didn't rain on the rocks for millions of years and then lower life forms formed and then, no, we came from the hand of our Creator. Genesis 1, 9 through 13. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. 
And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay. Thank you, Brother Aaron. Formation of lithosphere and biosphere. We are told of God's orderly plan. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. What did God see? That it was good. He saw that it was good. Yeah. Do you sometimes make something and you think, oh, that's not good? Sometimes when I'm doing carpenter work, I build something and I'm like, ah, that's not very good. Sometimes I shoe a horse and I think, hmm, it's not very good. But when God does something, it's good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was what? Good. He saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Everything that God does is very good. We can trust ourselves with Him. Psalms 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. As the earth came forth from the hand of its maker, it was exceedingly beautiful. Its surface was diversified with mountains, hills, and plains, interspersed with noble rivers and lovely lakes. But the hills and the mountains were not abrupt and rugged, abounding in terrific steeps and frightful chasms as they now do. The sharp, ragged edges of earth's rocky framework were buried beneath the fruitful soil, which everywhere produced a luxuriant growth of verdure. There were no loathsome swamps or barren deserts. Graceful shrubs and delicate flowers greeted the eye at every turn. The heights were crowded with trees more majestic than any that now exist. The air, untainted by the foul miasma, was clear and healthful. The entire landscape outvied in beauty the decorated grounds of the proudest palace. The angelic host viewed the scene with delight, and rejoiced at the wonderful works of God. So who rejoiced when they saw the Creator create? We just read that the angelic host, in other words, the group of angels, rejoiced when they saw the creation. Hmm. Earth comes from an unused root word, probably meaning to be firm. Right, so we have some review questions to help us think about what we just read. Uh, what did God name the dry land? Earth. Earth, that's right. And what did God name the water? The seas. The seas, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who can describe for us the third day of creation. What happened on the third day of creation? So on the third day we had plants appear. The seeds and the, the plants and the trees. Yes. That's right. 
if we would have been there on the third day of creation, we would have seen grass springing up. And we would have seen trees springing up. How long does it take, if you plant an apple tree, how long does it take for it to bear apples? Four years? Four years, depending on. Yeah, somewhere around there. Three to four years is a pretty good average. Pawpaws, <coughs> pawpaws might take three, four years, five years, maybe, maybe eight years. Um, but when God created it, it was bearing. Yeah, I wish I could have been there and just see trees just just growing so fast. Because wow. the that birds and the animals and later Adam would need something to eat, so it was all growing, created so instantly. So what did God say at the end of this third day of creating? It was good. It was good. <laughs> and it was good. Okay, so in this uh, study we're doing, we're learning about trees. And we're learning that there's two main categories of trees. Who knows what the main two main categories categories are so one way that we would term this is uh, evergreen mm. and deciduous uh, another way that it could be stated is evergreen or broadleaf trees <clears throat> there are many kinds of trees <clears throat> excuse me but most trees belong to one of the two main groups the broadleaf group or the needle leaf group these two types of trees grow in many parts of the world, while most other types of trees, like the palm and tree ferns, grow mainly in warm regions. In God's order, he planned trees which would provide people with food, wood, shelter, and much more. Throughout history, people have used wood for making tools, constructing boats, buildings, and for fuel. Where no wood is, the fire goeth out. The living tree is especially valuable to men. So, when we are cold here, what do we use wood for? Heat. Yes. When we need to cook something, what do we need? Wood. Wood, yes. When we need to use an axe to cut down a tree, what needs to be inside of the steel head? A piece of wood. Wood to help us cut down wood. Hmm. On the third day, God created the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself. The powerful energy God gave to trees so that they make more trees by seeds is amazing. For example, an elm tree produces an average of 1,584 million seeds. So in the lifetime of an elm tree, 1,584 million seeds. That's 1.4 billion? That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Each of these seeds has the power of producing the same number. We have a picture here of the broad, a broadleaf tree and a needle leaf, or deciduous and evergreen. Mm -hmm. um, picture may not be very clear there. <laughs> but we're going to go out one day and learn to identify some trees, which will be better than looking at these pictures. Okay, now we have a few questions. When you make something, like maybe you're making bread, or maybe you're making a salad, or maybe you're making building an outhouse, or maybe you're building the upper room for Henson Creek House of Prayer, flooring for the House of Prayer, whatever we're doing, can you say that it is good? Yes. God judged his own work, and do you think we should as well, since we are made in his image? Yes. So sometimes I do something and I think, oh, that wasn't very good. Um, we are made in His image, so we judge our own work. And that's something we can remember. If God judged His own work, 
we can follow his example and judge our own work. So when we are carrying in firewood or we are splitting firewood or doing something with wood, uh, let's ask the question, what was created on day three? Plants. Plants, yes. So n trees were, were a part of the plant. So trees are plants. Um, and so there, yes, grass was growing, different type of plants were growing, trees were growing. All the plants that we see growing now were created on day three. Although there was no poisonous plants on day three. Because when God made it, it was very good. There was no poisonous mushrooms. There was no poison hemlock. There was nothing poisonous. Yes. When we use a wooden pencil, where did that wood originate? From a tree. From a tree. And where did the tree come from? From God. Our Creator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. When using toilet paper... <laughs> Napkins, paper towels. Think about the process of it sacrificing its life and making your life more comfortable. So in order to make toilet paper, what needs to happen to the tree? Has to be cut down. Has to be cut down. And then what next? Processed. Yeah. So it's smashed into a pulp. And then it has something that makes our, something comes from that tree which makes us cleaner and happy. Mm. And so it reminds us of who? Mm. Jesus. He was sacrificed. Yeah. He was cut down for us. He was smashed. He was bruised for us. And because of that, our life is more clean. And he was put upon what? Yes. A tree. That's right. And that's he something. was. The Bible says, cursed is every man that is hung upon a tree. Mm. He took our curse because of sin. He took our curse upon him. And he was hung on a tree that he created. Mm. Psalms 145 and verse 5 says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. We are speaking of our Creator's wonderful works. Many times we take His wonderful works for granted. Uh, this is the second time I've heard all this today, and I just it just kind of came to me that it's probably a reason that I heard it a second time. There's probably yes. a reason for the imprint, the double imprint. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, we had microphone issues. Uh, the microphones died. They, I guess they weren't charged up well enough. So we had to uh, redo some ground that we had covered earlier this morning. But that's good. Uh, we Repetition deepens what? Understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Understanding, impression. That's right. Yes. All right. Mm. Well, uh, let us close with prayer. And then we will go back outside. And get some work done. Yeah. Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you created trees and other plants on the third day of creation. Thank you for creating something good in us by your miracle working power. We ask that you would bless the ones that are here and also those, those that are watching. Give us your Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. Yeshua. Amen. We are going to learn a little bit more about the benefits of trees, what they can do for us. Pine trees produce pitch or mm. sap that is very beneficial to man. It can be used when a person cuts themselves to promote healing and relieve the pain. Mm. One time I had a cut on my palm and I took my machete <coughs> and cut a pine tree, got the sap, and it healed it up so quickly. Hmm. Um, and that reminds us of who? 
The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, speaking of Jesus, He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Mm. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, Jesus was wounded so that our wounds could be healed. We have created these wounds because of our <coughs> sin. Our sin has brought these wounds upon ourselves. So, Jesus was wounded, and because of his wounding, we are healed. Just like we can wound the tree, get some sap, and put it on our physical wounds, Jesus, as a strong tree, he was wounded, and because of his blood, his life force coming, we have new life. The sticky pitch you get when you break the bark blisters of balsam fir is a good salve for cuts. We don't have balsam fir around here, but um, it grows out west, and it's a wonderful way to get. Uh, it just has pockets of nice sap. Slippery elm's inner bark, when boiled down in water, makes a good cough med medicine. The leftover pulp is good to put on sores. For a sore throat, chew slippery elm buds or twigs. Mm. Uh, the, uh, there was some Union soldiers that ran out of food because their supply train was cut off and they didn't have anything to eat so they ate slippery elm bark and they lived for weeks on it. Oh. And Native American people when they ran out of corn during the winter, they ran out, uh, they survived on the inner bark of slippery elm and other inner bark of other trees. Wow. Um, I've eat, I have, around here they call it red elm, it's the same thing, slippery elm. I have some on my property and I've eaten it, it's very, tastes really good and it's nutritious. Wow. Sassafras root tea is good for a stomach ache. Black cherry twig tea makes a good laxative. Alder leaf tea is a good skin wash for pimples. God says in his word, Revelation 22 and verse 2, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Mm. There are life-giving properties in the balsam of the pine, in the fragrance of the cedar and the fir. Remember that fragrance that we had yesterday? We were caving and mm. we had our hands were all muddy. <laughs> so we went to some eastern red cedars and we were clean, using that uh, to clean off our hands. And we're like, mmm, it was such a good fragrance. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. There are life-giving properties in the balsam of the pine, in the fragrance of the cedar and the fir. And there are other trees that are health-promoting. Let no such trees be ruthlessly cut down. Cherish them where they are abundant, and plant more where there are but few. Right. This shows us a picture of a red spruce. I'm excited. Each day we're going to learn more about trees. Nice. All right. That's good. Thank you for being uh, attentive students. Yeah. And we will see you tomorrow morning.